Okay, <clears throat> so uh, a few weeks ago, maybe about a month ago or so, I don't know, um, the series The Legend of Korra um, ended. Um, I am a huge fan of um, the Avatar series. I've been watching Avatar since it first aired many, many a year ago. Um, but anyways, um, I wasn't, like, I mean, I was keeping up with Korra. I've seen all the seasons, um, all the way through, and, um, <clears throat> I was waiting for, like, the final episodes to air, but I didn't get to catch them when they actually aired. So, um, just the other day, maybe three or so days ago, um, I watched the last few episodes, and I saw the final episode, the finale, of the entire series. And, um, the scene, um, at the very end, it's the last scene, where, um, Korra and Asami walk into the, um, <coughs> spirit portal, um, for a vacation, um, you know, I didn't think very much about it at first. Um, I, you know, I knew they were really good friends and their relationship as, um, friends developed over the course of the series, especially in the final season, where they became, you know, really close friends. Um, so I didn't think very much about it. I just thought they were going in as, you know, friends, you know, just vacationing in the spirit world. Um, but turns out, the next day, I look up, I look it up, um, because I was curious to see what people thought about the finale, and it turns out that, um, at the end of the series, Korra and Asami actually became a bisexual couple. Um, and this just blew my mind, because in all my years, I've been watching cartoons for as long as I can remember. You know, I've, I grew up during the the great 90s when like all the shows like um, Angry Beavers and Hey Arnold and, and Rugrats and Invader Zim and whatever, they were all on TV <coughs> and they were like just first airing. You know, I was around during that time and I'm a huge, um, you know, cartoon nerd. And in all my years of, you know, watching cartoons on television, never did I think, at least in my lifetime, you know, or, you know, at least this soon, you know, I'm 19, so I've been watching cartoons for a while, um, but never in my, you know, young years did I think I would ever see a, you know, bisexual couple depicted on, um, a children's cartoon, you know. It, it blew my mind. I was like, wow, this is like, this is revolutionary. This is something that could change, you know, how cartoons are, are done, um, perhaps. Um, so, anyways, um, I was shocked, but, um, I wasn't, like, you know, upset, of course, you know, um, but I was definitely, I was definitely shocked and surprised that, um, that the creators would, you know, do something like this, something so daring, something that no, uh, the only other, you know, um, you know, cartoon that I can think of, honestly, where um, they might have, you know, there's questions about their sexuality would be Spongebob and Patrick because apparently, originally, Steven Hillenburg wanted Spongebob and Patrick to be a, um, a gay couple. Um, and apparently, I, th I think, don't quote me on this, I think there's a comic that was created before the show where they are depicted as a gay couple. Um, also, there is, um, this isn't really a children's cartoon, <coughs> but um, Red and Stimpy, um, they have this thing called the Adult Party Show where in that show they are um, actually depicted as a gay couple as well. In fact, they, um, you know, partake in sexual intercourse at one point. It's not graphic or anything, but, um, yeah. Um, I'm not sure, honestly, because some episodes they are, like, you know, on, you know, on the women. Um, so maybe they're, they were just depicted as a bisexual couple, but I've read that they were, that they were indeed depicted as a gay couple. Um, but anyways, but it wasn't clear. There's also, you know, Bugs Bunny, you know, Daffy Duck, you know, but, um, but none of them were ever, like, strictly proclaimed, or the creators never admitted that they were indeed, you know, um, a, you know, same-sex couple. But th so this is the first time in Western cartoon history that there is a same-sex couple depicted. And it's, it blew my mind, honestly. I was, I was in shock, but not in a bad way, in a really, you know, honest you know, in good way, because I was like, this could change everything, you know, people might decide to start, you know, because, <clears throat> I, I mean, you know, like, Family Guys, uh, South Park, all these shows, you know, depict gay people and, you know, bisexual people all the time, you know, bisexual couples, gay couples, lesbian couples, you know, um, 
same sex acts of, of you know sex but um you know like this is the first time on a children's cartoon it, it surprised me because it was a children's cartoon if it was like you know family guy or south park i wouldn't be surprised at all because they've done that you know a million times but a children's cartoon and avatar no less avatar being the first cartoon the first children's cartoon to ever depict a same-sex couple it was incredible um so i looked up what the um what the creators had to say about it so um if i could um read what um uh DiMartino, one of the co-creators said he said our intention with the last scene was to make it as clear as possible that yes Kor and asami have romantic feelings for each other the moment where they enter the spirit portal symbolizes their evolution from being friends to being a couple many news outlets bloggers and fans picked up on this and didn't find it ambiguous for the most part, it seems like the point of the scene was understood and additional commentary wasn't really needed from Brian or me. Um, but in case people were still questioning what happened in the last scene, I wanted to make a clear verbal statement uh, to complement the show's visual one. I get that not everyone will be happy with the way the show ended. Rarely does a series finale of any show satisfy the show's fans, so I've been pleasantly surprised with the positive ar um, articles and posts I've seen about Korra's finale. So, clearly he's um, <coughs> very happy and satisfied with how it ended. Now, th now this is what Kanitsko said. Um, uh, Brian Kanitsko said, and this is a bit lengthy, but I'm, I'm going to uh, try to get through as fast as I can. He said, just because two characters of the same sex appear in the same story, it should not preclude um, the possibility of a romantic, um, I'm sorry, of a romance between them. Um, no, not everyone is queer, but on the other side of that coin is that not everyone is straight. The more Kor and Asami's relationship progress, the more the idea of a romance between them organically blossomed for us. However, we still operated under this notion, um, another unwritten rule, that we were not allowed to depict that on our show. So we alluded to it throughout the second half of the series, working in the idea that their trajectory, um, sorry, trajectory could be heading towards a romance. Um, but as we got close to finishing the finale, the thought struck me. How do I know we can't openly depict that? <coughs> Sorry. <clears throat> no one ever explicitly said so. It was just another assumption based on a paradigm that marginalizes non-heterosexual people. If we want to see that paradigm evolve, we need to take a stand against it. And I didn't uh, want to look back in 20 years and think, man, we could have fought harder for that. Mike and I talked it uh, over and decided it was important to be unambiguous about the intended relationship. We approached the network while they were um, they were supportive of uh, their limit. I'm sorry, let me start over. Um, we approached the network and while they were supportive, there was a limit to how far we could go with it. As just about every article I read accurately deduced, um, it was originally written in the script over a year ago that Korra and Asami held hands as they walked into the spirit portal. We went back and forth on it in the storyboards, but later in the retake process, I staged a revision where they turned towards each other, clasping both hands in a reverential manner. In a direct reference to Variks and Zuli's nuptial, um, or nuptial, pose for a few minutes prior, we asked Jeremy Zuckerman to make the music tender and romantic, and he fulfilled this the assignment with a sublime score. I think the um, entire last two-minute sequence of Korra and Asami turned out beautiful, and again, it is a resolution of which I am very proud of. I love how the relationship arc took its time, uh, through kindness and caring. <clears throat> if it seems out of the blue to you, I think a second viewing of the last seasons, the last two seasons um, would show that perhaps you are looking at only uh, through hetero lens. And then he went on to say this, um, We did it for all our queer friends, family, and colleagues. It is long overdue that our media, including children's media, stops treating non-heterosexual people as non-existent, or as something merely to be mocked. I'm only sorry it took us so long to have this kind of representation in our story. So, apparently, they've been planning this for quite a while, and they wanted to do this idea, they wanted to roll with this idea for quite a while, that they depict a um, same-sex couple, um, a bisexual couple, um, in one of the shows to represent the, that, um, you know, that you know, community of people to let them know that, um, you know, cartoons can't just totally block them out. You know, children's cartoons. Um, um, they don't want, you know, children's cartoons to discriminate or anything. <coughs> my, um, my only things about that, though, and um, I don't want to sound offensive to anybody, and I'm going to try my best not to, the only things about that 
um, that I have is that we, unless they decide to make a, another series, which they very well might, I mean, Avatar is something extremely popular, has a huge fan following, community, whatever, you know, it, we won't see any of their relationship develop, is the thing. You know, they, they throw this in, well, they didn't really throw it in because, like I said, they've been planning this for a long, long time, but the thing is that they put this, you know, this the start of this beautiful relationship in the final episode, at the last two minutes of the entire series. And now that the entire series of Korra is done, you know, we won't get a chance to see any of their relationship develop. Um, unless, they, of course, they make the comics like they did with The Last Airbender that shows, like, what happened as soon as the series ended, you know, and um, they made um, comics that show, like, what happened to Zuko's mother, what happened to Azula, and that actually... Um, spoiler alert, that um, they all actually team up with Azula in order to find Zuko and Azula's mother. <clears throat> so we actually get to see um, her, um, their mother. I'm not, that's all I'm going to say because I don't want to spoil anything. Um, but unless they do that, you know, we're not going to see anything between you know, Korra and Asami develop because the series is over. Um, you know, all we can assume is that they remain a beautiful couple and that they love each other, but I mean, <clears throat> aside from that, we're not going to see any of what happens after that. Unless, of course, they make another series where they show flashbacks of Korra, like they did with Korra and The Last Airbender, where they showed flashbacks of what happened after The Last Airbender ended, with, like, um, Aang and all of his friends growing up. So, there's that. The other thing is, um, now, and this is kind of what's going to make me mad if something like this happens, is that people are going to say, you know, you did it, Nickelodeon, Cartoon Network, now it's your turn. Um, what I think about that is that is a very... It's not right to just, you know, assume or bully, you know, other networks into thinking... And same with Disney Channel, too. You know, I, it's, it's not right to assume that just because one children's cartoon depicted a same-sex couple that every cartoon is going to now, or that the majority of cartoons are going to now. And, you know, it's not right to, say, boycott, you know, Cartoon Network just because they don't, you know, depict a, a same-sex couple. Um, you know, if, you know, if, like, a show like Adventure Time or Steven Universe or Regular Show or whatever decides to depict a same-sex couple you know, more power to them. But the thing is that I don't want them... I would be, you know, upset if they just decided to throw a, you know, a bisexual couple in <coughs> just for the just for the heck of it, you know? Um, if they were to throw, you know, one in, or to create a relationship between two, you know, people of the same gender, um, you know, I'd want it to mean something. I'd want it to, you know, not so much like, you know, to the characters themselves, but just to as the show as a whole. I want it to like, you know, af affect the entire show and make me, you know, f you know, realize that this is going to like, you know, make the show even better. Not just something that's, you know, there for one episode and then to the side for the rest of the series. I want it to like be something that continues, you know. I want to enjoy these characters being together. I want to like these characters more because of the decisions that they made, not just because it's there, not just because that relationship is there in the show, but because it affects the show, not just them being there and then just never doing anything ever again. You know, just, like, not making cameos, but they actually, you know, bring something different and more to the show. That's what I want, if they were to do something like this. But, you know, these creators of cartoons shouldn't feel obligated to put in, you know, same-sex couples just because Nickelodeon did it. Just because Avatar did it doesn't mean that they have to. You know, they, you know, these creators have full reign of what they do, to an extent, um, but they shouldn't feel like they have to put them in just because Avatar did it first, you know. That's what I'm trying to say. Um, but if they did, you know, and it, it brought something better to the show, not just a couple, but, you know, a couple that affects the show, you know, more power to the creators, more power to the show, and more power to the characters, because it'll make me enjoy the show more if there's something there for me to enjoy, not just something that's there, you know. <clears throat> um, but I was saying, you know, people shouldn't bully these other, you know, creators and um, other channels into, 
You know, it's like saying that just because the Proud Family, you probably all, you know, have heard of the Proud Family if you're in, really into cartoons from the 90s and whatnot. Um, if, like, just because the Proud Family had a predominantly black cast, that means that every show should have a predominantly black cast, or most cartoons should have a predominantly black cast. That means nothing. That's not something that has to happen. You know, they have, like, the Cleveland show and whatnot on. And Proud Film, of course, has long since ended. But, um, you know, just because the Proud Family or the Cleveland show has a predominantly black cast doesn't mean every show or most shows have to. They shouldn't feel obligated to. These creators shouldn't feel obligated to make a predominantly black cast of characters for a cartoon. Just as creators of these shows shouldn't feel obligated to put in, you know, more... You know, like um, you know, same-sex couples into cartoons just because people say that they have to or that they should because they, I mean, they shouldn't have to. They should, you know, want to if they want to. You know, they shouldn't feel bullied into putting them in. They shouldn't feel like, oh, well, if we don't, then you know, people are going to boycott our show, and then we have to take it off the air. You know, of course, that wouldn't, you know, take it off the air, but. You know, they don't want to feel threatened that people dislike their show simply because people think they perceive that they are discriminating against a certain sexual orientation of people. So, that's all that's been on my mind. You know, I really enjoy Korra. I liked the ending. It was very epic. It was very nice. And um, I'm hoping that, you know, the creators make another, um, you know, series of the Avatar. <coughs> which might come in, like, 20-whatever, 2020 20 or something. Um, but anyways... Thank you for watching this video, and um, you know if you want to comment or leave any thoughts or anything, just you know leave a comment down below. We can talk, we can chat, whatever. Um, anyways, thank you, and so long.